Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Thursday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Thursday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. All right, this is going to be the part two of our original common math mistakes video. So in this video, we'll take a look at some of the common math mistakes in intermediate algebra. So let's begin. For our first common math mistake, we're going to talk about simplifying fractions. Um, this might sound like an easy topic to a lot of you guys, but trust me, in some cases, it can get a bit tricky. So let's take a look at an example. So we have a plus ax over a equals um, a plus x. So I might ask you guys, do you see anything wrong with the answer here? Um, you guys can pause the video, try to figure out the problem yourself, and then you can resume. Alright, so in this problem, we cannot simply divide out our a's because we have a plus sign here. Um, the right way to actually solve this problem would be to write a over a. We have to kind of break our problem, and then ax times a. Now we can divide out our a's. So a divided by a is going to give us 1 for the denominator, and a divided by a is simply going to be 1. Okay? So we're going to have 1 plus x over 1 is simply going to be x. So this is the correct answer. All right? The second common math mistake happens when you're dealing with simple logarithmic equations. So, let's say I have um, log base 2 of 32 equals 2x. Okay? So, on some of my papers, I've seen my students write 2x equals 32 and then they'll solve for x, so we're going to get x to be 15. But this answer is fundamentally wrong. This is not the right way to solve logarithmic equations. So the right way to actually solve problems like this is to have your base raised to whatever you have after the equal sign. So if you have a or x, it's just going to be your base raised to whatever you have here. So in this case, we have x, so we're simply going to have 2x equals 32. And then we have to kind of break 32. So 2 times 2 is going to give me 4, times 2 is going to give me 8, times 2 is going to give me 16, and times 2 is going to give me 32. And then I have to count my twos, so I have one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to have five as my final answer. The third common mistake happens when we're dealing with trigonometric identities. So let's say we have cosecant of theta equals 1 over cosine of theta. And my question would be, is this statement true? Um, at first glance, you know, you might say cosecant, cosine, and, you know, it sounds just about right. But in reality, you're making a mistake. Cosecant is not equal to 1 over cosine. Cosecant is equal to 1 over sine theta. Okay? The only way to avoid making this mistake is just by remembering the, this identity. Um, there's a long proof that 
you know, kind of says why cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over six, uh, sine of theta, but we're not going to get there. The fourth common mistake is when we are solving exponential equations. So, for example, I have um, 2 to the power of x plus 1 equals 8. A lot of people just divide both sides by a 2, so they get x plus 1 equals to 4, and they'll try to solve for x, and they get the wrong answer. And that's essentially not the right way to solve problems like this. So we're going to cross this off. Let me rewrite the problem. So we have 2 to the power of x plus 1 equals 8. What we have to do here is to equalize our bases. So if I have a 2 here, I have to make sure that I somehow convert my 8 to be in the power of 2. So we could just say that 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 is essentially 2 raised to the power of 3. Okay? So instead of 8, we can write 2 to the power of x plus 1 equals 2 raised to the power of 3 or 2 cubed. And from here, we can just cancel out our bases. So we'll be left with x plus 1 equals 3 and then all we have to do we need to solve for x so x is 3 minus 1 we're gonna get 2 right so you know some little mistakes just try to avoid them and finally for the fifth common mistake we're gonna to touch on limits um, a lot of you guys are still in higher algebra classes like Algebra 3-4 or if you're taking pre-calc, the concept of limit is something pretty new and out of ordinary and as a result of that, it can get, a pre it can get pretty tricky. So let me show you what I mean with an example. So let's say I have limit as x approaches 5 of x squared minus 25 over x minus 5. Okay, so basically you're going to plug in your 5 for your x, so 5 squared just going to give you 25 minus 25, and then you have a 5 for your denominator. And you're going to plug in your 5 again, so you're going to get 0 divided by 0, and you're going to write limit does not exist. But actually, the limit does exist. So remember, I mean, I've seen this happening a lot. Remember, when you're trying to solve for limits, you always want to simplify your fractions. Okay, so if I have limit, as x approaches 5 of x squared minus 25 over x minus 5. I always want to make sure that this fraction right here is as simplified as possible. If it's not, then we're not going to get the right answer. Okay? So if we take a look at this, we can say that x squared minus 25 is essentially representing difference of squares. So that's going to be x plus 5, right? times x minus 5. We're essentially just breaking this down and for our denominator we're just going to have x minus 5 and then now we can divide out x minus 5's so we'll be left with x plus 5 and our limit is approaching 5, our x is approaching 5 so we're simply going to plug in this 5, so 5 plus 5 10 as our final answer. So, as a word of advice for some of you guys who are in pre calc and planning to take calculus, I highly suggest that you study limits prior to taking your calculus class. 
because the first chapters of Calc 1 is basically talking about limits in detail and since you're barely introduced to limits from pre-calc or algebra 3 4 the whole concept can be a bit challenging and tricky um, so if you study limits before taking calculus I'll guarantee that you guys will have a better understanding from the concept um, so that pretty much sums up this video please comment subscribe and stay tuned for our future videos Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Thursday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Thursday, happy studying.